Greetings, adventurers. Welcome to all our new subscribers, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Let's dive into today's journey together. We're thrilled to have you all here, especially those of you who have just joined us. Your support means the world to us, and for those who are still on the fence, consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got a world of adventures waiting for you, and we wouldn't want you to miss out. Now on to the main event. Today we're venturing into a land that's often overlooked, a land that's as mysterious as it is beautiful, a place that has been dubbed the last Shangri-La, a kingdom untouched by the rapid pace of modern life. Yes, dear friends, we're talking about Bhutan, a place where the gross national happiness is more important than the gross national product, a place where chilies are not just a seasoning but the main dish. So buckle up, as we are about to embark on a virtual journey into the enchanting kingdom of Bhutan. Nestled in the eastern Himalayas, Bhutan is often referred to as the last Shangri-La. A land of staggering natural beauty, it's a place that has been largely untouched by the hands of time and the rapid pace of the modern world. Imagine a country where majestic mountains stretch towards the sky, their peaks dusted with the first snows of winter. Picture vast valleys carpeted with an array of vibrant flora, where wild rivers cut through the landscape like gleaming serpents. This is Bhutan a sanctuary of pristine wilderness where the air is so fresh it's like breathing in a lungful of pure vitality. Bhutan's geographical position, cradled between India and Tibet, has allowed it to remain isolated and protected from the outside world. This isolation has preserved an ecosystem of rich biodiversity where rare and endangered species flourish. Here, the Bengal tiger prowls in the shadowy forest, the taken grazes in high-altitude meadows, and the black-necked crane dances in the wetlands. Yet, it's not just the natural beauty that makes Bhutan the last Shangri-La. It's also the nation's commitment to preserving its environment. In Bhutan, environmental protection isn't just a policy, it's a way of life. The country is the world's only carbon-negative nation, absorbing more carbon dioxide than it emits. Not only is Bhutan a land of breathtaking landscapes, but it's also a place where the rhythm of life moves in harmony with nature. Here, the people live not in the shadow of their environment, but as part of it. They breathe the same air as the leopards and the bears. They drink from the same rivers as the deer and the fish. They are as much a part of the landscape as the towering mountains and the sweeping valleys. But Bhutan isn't just about breathtaking landscapes, it's also a place where culture and tradition flourish. And in our next scene, we will dive into the rich tapestry of Bhutanese culture and tradition, a realm where ancient customs and rituals still play a vital part in everyday life. The heartbeat of Bhutan lies in its vibrant culture and deep-rooted traditions. Tucked away in the eastern Himalayas, Bhutan is a treasure trove of ancient traditions and vibrant culture. The Bhutanese way of life is deeply intertwined with their traditional dress, unique festivals, and the omnipresent influence of Buddhism. Let's begin with the national dress. For men, it's the go, a knee-length robe tied at the waist by a cloth belt, while women wear the kira, an ankle-length dress paired with a light outer jacket. These traditional costumes are more than just clothing. They are a symbol of national identity, worn with pride and grace on all occasions. Bhutan's calendar is generously sprinkled with a variety of festivals, locally known as Chechus. These are spiritual events celebrated with much fanfare, where locals gather in monasteries and dzongs to witness the vibrant mask dances that depict ancient Buddhist tales. These festivals are not just for merrymaking, but also an opportunity for Bhutanese people to gain religious merit. Buddhism, the state religion, is not merely a faith in Bhutan, but a way of life. Its influence is seen in every aspect, from the prayer flags fluttering in the wind to the spinning prayer wheels and the monastic schools where children learn the ancient scriptures. The Bhutanese believe in leading a life that is harmonious with nature and all sentient beings, a philosophy that is deeply rooted in Buddhism. And then there's the unique concept of gross national happiness. Unlike most countries that measure progress by gross domestic product, Bhutan focuses on the happiness and well-being of its people. This philosophy permeates every aspect of Bhutanese life, from education and healthcare to conservation of environment and preservation of culture. Bhutan's culture is a rich tapestry woven with threads of tradition, spirituality, and a deep sense of community. It's a culture that cherishes happiness over materialistic gains, a culture that reveres nature 
and a culture that values the spiritual over the temporal. Now that we have a glimpse of Bhutan's culture, let's explore its architectural marvels. Bhutanese architecture is a visual treat, an amalgamation of tradition and aesthetics. As we delve into the architecture of this Himalayan kingdom, we find a unique style that has evolved over centuries. It's as though each building tells a story, a tale steeped in Bhutanese culture and tradition. At the heart of Bhutanese architecture are the Dzongs, fortress-like structures that serve both as administrative centers and monastic homes. These imposing edifices, built without the use of nails or blueprints, stand as a testament to the ingenuity and skill of Bhutanese craftsmen. Intricate woodwork, massive courtyards, and towering exterior walls are the hallmarks of these architectural marvels. Then, we have the traditional Bhutanese farmhouses, a three-story structure with a unique design. The ground floor is typically used for livestock, the first floor for storing hay, and the top floor is living quarters. These houses are made from rammed earth and timber, often painted with a mixture of red ochre to give them their distinctive color. And let's not forget the ornate monasteries dotting Bhutan's landscape. These spiritual sanctuaries, adorned with vibrant frescoes and intricate carvings, are as much a place for worship as they are a testament to Bhutan's architectural prowess. But, what truly sets Bhutanese architecture apart is its use of symbols and color. Dragons, tigers, phoenixes. These mythical creatures are often painted on the exterior walls, each symbolizing different Buddhist teachings. The color palette, too, is symbolic. Red represents the fire of life. White symbolizes purity, while yellow stands for the richness of the earth. Even in the face of modernization, Bhutan has managed to preserve its architectural heritage, a feat that is truly commendable. These structures are not just buildings, they are physical manifestations of Bhutan's history, culture, and spiritual beliefs. So, whether it's a majestic zong, a humble farmhouse, or an ornate monastery, each structure in Bhutan is a piece of art, a testament to a culture that values tradition and aesthetics. From its unique architecture to its vibrant culture, Bhutan truly is a gem hidden in the Himalayas. Our journey is coming to an end, but Bhutan's allure is endless. We have traversed across the last Shangri-La, delved into the heart of Bhutanese culture and tradition, and marveled at the unique architecture that is a testament to the country's rich history. Bhutan, a nation that dances to the rhythm of its own drum, nestled between the towering Himalayan peaks, offers an experience like no other. It's a place where tradition and modernity coexist, where the air is fresh with the scent of pine forests, and where happiness is measured not in material wealth but in the smiles of its people. Visiting Bhutan is not just about ticking off a destination on your travel list, it's about immersing yourself in a culture that's as vibrant as the robes of its monks, as serene as its monasteries, and as warm as its welcoming locales. That's all for today, folks. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting journeys. Until next time, keep exploring.